Hello and welcome to the Textile Conservation Lab of the Minnesota Historical Society. My name is Ann Frazina and I'm the Textile Conservator. We've created a series of podcasts to assist you in the storage of heirloom textiles. And in this podcast, I'll be showing you how to create padded hangers. Padded hangers are a cushion support that will allow you to hang your costumes in storage. Now, just a quick note on the terminology. I refer to all clothing items as costumes, and this is the common term in the museum community. However, other terms that are used are regalia and clothing. However, in this podcast, I'll be referring to all of these items here as costumes. Padded hangers are created with a polypropylene plastic hanger base. Now, some people like to use a wooden hanger. I don't recommend this. Wooden hangers off-gas harmful materials which will damage your textiles, so do not use them. The other materials that you'll need when you're creating a padded hanger is the needle punch felt, as well as a piece of the cotton knit stockinette tubing. And all of these items are described in the materials podcast. Now the first thing you need to do when you're creating a padded hanger is to cut the needle punch felt or batting. And the way you do that is you take your, ha your hanger and you just simply lay it down on the needle punch felt or batting so that the width extends down in front of you. And then you can see it's from end to end and I just cut down here horizontally and I have a strip. Once that's done, I lay my hanger down and then I just gently wrap this over tightly and I measure to this point here. Once that's done, I make a slit up the felt from bottom to where that point is that I measured, right up here. And I've already cut this so that I could show you it's two pieces. It's almost like two legs. Once that's done, you can actually wrap the padding around your plastic hanger. And this is a little tricky. You may have to do it a couple times to get it right. The nice thing about the padding is that it kind of molds as you pull on it. And so you want to get it kind of taut. You don't want any folds in it like that. And you just kind of want to work it down till it covers all the way to the end. You can see I have a little bit of that showing still. Wrap that around. And I've got a little bit of bulkiness. I'm going to fold that under and wrap it around so that it's all taut again and bring it around the front. And now I'm going to do the same to the other side. And wrap it around. Go again. Bring it up a little bit there. This stuff is really stretchy. When you get that kind of an extra kind of overage, you can just fold it under. Now your goal here is to make a soft cushioned surface. And this is a fairly nicely wrapped, soft cushioned surface. It's not perfect. It just needs to be a soft cushioned surface. Once you've wrapped the hanger with the polyester needle punch felt or batting, you want to take a piece of the tube fabric, the cotton knit stockinette that we talked about earlier. And I like to cut a piece that is longer than my hanger by at least three and a half inches on either side. Once that's done, I fold it in half and I take my scissor and make a very, very small nick at the top. Just about an eighth of an inch. And the reason it's so small is because that little nick will grow as you put this covering onto your hanger. The next part is kind of persnickety. It's like putting on a pair of pantyhose almost. You have to wrap, keep your batting in the same place, and extend your cotton knit stocking net over it. Find that hole and punch that hole through the top, like I did right there. And then extend it on the other side. Now, I simply take my ends and tuck them in the bottom. Now, these are storage hangers. They are not show hangers. And that's why I don't take the time 
to get really fussy with how they look on the ends because it doesn't really matter. And now that we've completed our padded hanger, we're ready to insert it into an actual costume. Now, of course, whenever you're handling an actual costume or textile of any kind, you want to be sure to remove all your jewelry and that your hands have been washed and are clean. That being said, I'm going to bring this 19th century bodice over here. And I'm going to open up, this is an open front one. I'm just going to slide this open right here and I'm going to insert the hanger. Now this hanger is a medium size hanger so it fits the bodice from shoulder to shoulder. You can see it hanging, it hangs fairly well. There, the hangers do come in different sizes. You can get a very, very large one, which is customarily used for coats, and you can see how much bigger that one would be. And then you can also make them smaller or purchase a children's size one. I like to actually cut the medium size hanger down when necessary to use it for a children's garment. And here we have a little christening coat right here. And what I want to do is insert this hanger into it. And you'll see this hanger actually is the medium size hanger, but it's been cut down and you just take a hacksaw and slice it right off. And so once that's done, let me cover this up. It's small enough to insert in this little piece here. And these children pieces are a little tough to get a hanger that truly fits. So you often need to make this kind of a change. And there you go. Now some costumes can be hung and some cannot. The three items I have here before me cannot be hung. The first piece here, which is a 19th century bodice, has very, very fine silk net on the sleeves and on the cuffs, going all the way up here. And this fabric is so fine, the weight of the lace has actually pulled apart the lower cuff down here. So we have tears where it's absolutely falling apart. The other problem here is that the beading that's been applied to it, and here are some of the beads right here, is very heavy. And beading itself will pull apart costumes, especially when it's applied to very, very sheer fabrics or laces. So whenever something is beaded, I recommend that it be stored flat or in a box. Finally, structurally, this piece is just in, in tatters along the bottom and along the sleeves on the inside. So I just truly recommend that anything that is structurally unsound be stored in a box or flat. This is a beautiful beaded dress from the 20s. And it is whole and stable and secure and everything looks great and it could be hung. However, whenever you're dealing again with the beads, we see here we have very, very sheer fabric. And these beads all over will pull on this sheer, sheer silk crepe and make tears. And an area of weakness within costumes is the underarm area where body soiling is often left behind and what you get over time kind of comes about as it's hanging there are holes under the arms and if it's hanging these holes will grow greatly at a rapid rate. Finally you'll notice I'm wearing gloves right now and I always wear gloves whenever I'm handling costumes that have sequins on them and this piece does have the sequins around the neck, the waist, and the hem. Sequins from this time period are often made with gelatin and all you have to do is touch them and you leave behind an actual fingerprint. So I always handle any kind of costume with sequins with gloves. Finally, this is a knit item and knits are very, very stretchy as we all know. If this were hung on a hanger for a long period of time, it would eventually stretch out so that it was longer and longer and longer, especially along the bodice area because of the weight of the skirt on the bottom. So I recommend that knit items always be stored flat or in a box. And one more thing, whenever you're storing a costume, the grain of the fabric should go perpendicular and horizontally 
across the dress. It should not be a dress cut on the bias where the grain of the fabric intersects, intersects like an X across it. Common garments that are made with bias cuts, um, bias lined up fabric are the 30s. Anything from the 30s is often bias cut. And those are gowns that again will be very, very stretchy and will elongate over time if they are hung on a hanger. So just a quick recap, the kinds of costumes that you do not want to hang are knit, beaded, structurally unsound, or something that is cut on the bias where the grain intersects across the dress in an X form. Preparing padded hangers for costumes is a costly, time-consuming process, but it's a great way to store your costumes. Please refer to the Minnesota Historical Society website for information on where to purchase the materials we worked with here today. And in our next podcast, we'll be reviewing how to store costumes in boxes.